forward. And so thanks everyone for joining us today. We have Hayden Davis and Joe DeCola of ArborJet. Hayden is our sales representative for uh, horticulture and commercial grows, as well as Joe DeCola, who is the head of R&D for ArborJet. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, they're covering using Nutriroot for successful planting. And so Hayden, take it away. Hello everyone. Hope everyone's doing okay during this time. Uh, so we'll start off uh, introducing ArborJet and Ecologel. So our main mission here at ArborJet is to develop the most effective formulations and delivery systems in plant health care. Um, as the premier solutions provider, we are committed to advancing technology in the industries we serve through the thought of leadership, scientific research, and customer service. Um, so as a leader, we recognize ethical behavior, environmental responsibility, and good stewardship as essential in sustaining our business. And we have also partnered with Ecologel Solutions to expand our lineup of environmentally responsible plant healthcare products and broaden the expert resources we offer to you. So we're just going to get started with the role of the root systems, why they're important to our plants, um, how vital they are. Um, so the primary functions of roots are to create anchorage for the plant, um, absorb water and dissolve minerals, and store the reserve food. Uh, the roots are also the base of the transportation of all of the minerals and waters to reach to the stems of the plant. Um, the primary root is also known as the radical, is the first to appear when a seed germinates. Um, so that's the first main root that grows whenever uh, the seed uh, opens up. And then roots grow in the length of only from their end. So the very tip of the root is covered by a symbol-shaped root cap, which serves to protect the growing tip as it makes its way through the soil. Um, the absorption of water and dissolved minerals occurs through the epidermis of it and a process to greatly enhance most plants with the presence of root hair. So those are the little tiny roots you see that are spreading out. Um, so there is the main root system that helps with the length of everything, and then the root hairs is what helps extend the surface, surface area underneath. Um, so this is basically how the plant eats and drinks. Um, so they also provide a sturdy foundation for the plant. So if it's grown outdoors, um, you don't have to worry about really harsh winds. If, well, of course, of course, there's a bad tornado or anything like that. But a regular day-to-day -day wind and uh, environmental stresses outside, a good root system will be able to keep the plant healthy. Um, but maintaining a healthy root system is a key part to ensuring you have a healthy and happy looking garden. So then our next one. So what can cause the poor root systems and how can it affect your plant later on and even uh, currently? Um, so there's a number of reasons why your plant can develop poor root system or why your plant doesn't transplant well. Because uh, whenever you do transplant, your, your, your plant's already going to be under stress just by the action of it. Um, because it's getting this, it has to be used to something else. So either a new pot or a new place in the ground, new soil, anything like that. Um, so healthy roots, whenever you uh, take it out of the pot, healthy roots are a result of care and balanced nutrient intake. Uh, so keeping your plants roots healthy, healthy is a vital part of ensuring normal growth as well. So when it comes to unhealthy roots, um, they can be often caused by over or underwatering. Uh, improper usage of fertilizers, or even too much competition between the roots. Um, that is why some plants require a minimal amount of spacing whenever you put them into ground um, so they don't fight for surface area underneath the uh, soil for space. Um, so whenever you overwater a plant, you cause the soil to fill up with water and reduce the likelihood of sufficient oxygen being absorbed. Plants have to breathe just like we do. So when you don't water your plant enough, the roots may dry out and shrink, and then they are unable to transfer key nutrients from the soil to the rest of the plant. And so it's basically starving the plant. Uh, when looking to see if your roots are healthy and transplanting, they should be a white or tan color. Um, healthy roots are plenty in number, so it's a, usually a good amount, um, and appear long enough to hold the soil and shape of the pot. So whenever you take it out, the soil is still intact. But you can also, if you leave it in there too long and, it, and the root system gets too large, it can also be root bound, which you need to look for as well. Um, so if you can see any of the root tips whenever you take it out, they should be noticeably white, that's showing new growth. But also keep in mind that certain nutrients can stain your roots, uh, just like that's normal. But unhealthy roots, uh, they crumble to the touch and are really brown in color or generally signs of unhealthy. Um, always check your plant's root system before transplanting. 
because the action itself, like I said before, can cause stress, stress on the plant. So when you're actually transplanting, just like the picture shown in this slide, um, we want to lessen the transplant shock as much as we can. Um, so when transplant stress occurs, it can result in the reduction of the plant's growth, which is not what we want especially whenever we are landscaping and installing new plants for a customer or for a company. We want them to be able to look full and grown and healthy as can be to make sure the outside of their business at home looks uh, all well put together. Um, so this is seeing how much the new sprigs grow after you plant. Um, if a plant is not growing properly, it often has significantly shortened internodes, which can result in shorter branch tips. So it looks kind of stunted um, compared to those of a plant that's not suffering from stress. Uh, this can cause overall plant to look bad. Uh, when a plant is under stress like this, it's also more susceptible to pests and diseases. Just like whenever our immune system is not really the best, that's why we take our vitamins and everything. And so to combat those diseases so we can don't have to get sick, same thing with the plants as well. And also new needles and leaves of, uh, of a plant under stress are gonna be smaller than what is considered normal. So the leaves are gonna be overall smaller, not as much foliage. Um, it isn't unusual for a transplanted plant to have extremely reduced growth the initial year after planting, and, but however, these symptoms of, uh, can even cause two years or more of problems. Um, you want to be able to give your plants the best care before transplanting to avoid all these possible problems after. So that's whenever we want to use Nutrirut. So Nutrirut is a 2 2 3 um, it's a unique blend of nutrients, seaweed extract, humic acid, surfactants, and humectants. Um, so we want to be able to give our root system, our plants, the best care possible. So with Nutrirut, this product is here to help with all your root system and care and transplant needs especially. Um, so it's a soil applied fertilizer with a unique blend. Um, unlike products currently available on the market, uh, that are purely nutrient-based or standalone water management products, Nutri combines these and more into a one and easy effective treatment. And also you don't have to buy multiple uh, different products. The patented blend of humectants enables soil to extract water from the air into the root zone, reducing the need for watering and resulting in successful plantings even under stress conditions. So you can see right here the benefits when to use, but mainly great for transplanting. So I always tell uh, the garden centers I talk to, this is an excellent add-on. Uh, so whenever their customers come in to buy plants, um, it's a great thing to add on. So whenever they do move it into their garden or a different pot, they can have use, this used. And also for landscaping companies and nurseries too, whenever you're just transplanting moving pots, perfect to use. Uh, right here, so we, like I said, we want to transplant with confidence and just one gallon of nutri makes up to 100 gallons of solution. And right here, you can see all the different sizes. We even have a, a hose and sprayer attachment product as well. And uh, Joe, if you want to take it from here. Sure. So the um, question is, uh, why did we formulate Nutrit the way we formulated it? And basically, as Hayden said, we are interested in uh, transplant success and root development. Um, so. Uh, it is comprised of both macronutrients and micronutrients. The three major macronutrients are nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. The micros are iron, manganese, and zinc. Uh, so I, we put these in the formulation. Basically, the components, uh, the major components, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, we purposely kept the nitrogen fairly low at 2%. And the reason for that is that uh, most folks think about nitrogen, and it's true, uh, for green growth, but roots also need nitrogen for establishment. Um, so some nitrogen is useful for uh, growth, and that includes root development, um, but also some of that nitrogen is utilized by soil microbes. Um, and the proportion of nitrogen, uh, part of it is a urea that would be uh, uh, changed by some of the uh, nitrifying uh, bacteria in the soil to make it more available to the plant. So in effect, a little bit of a slow release is involved in the formulation. Phosphorus is important uh, to plant growth and health and for reproduction, uh, although that's not what we're initially interested in. 
Some uh, sources indicate that phosphorus is important for root development as well. It is a key component in energy management within the plant. Um, some of you folks may have heard of uh, ATP, adenosine triphosphate, contains phosphorus, um, so it's important in the energy system of the plant. Potassium, another a macronutrient, is a little bit different from both nitrogen and phosphorus. Uh, nitrogen can be found in soils, uh, implied that uh, there are um, uh, microbes that actually capture atmospheric nitrogen. Um, they may be free living in the soil and uh, legumes. Uh, those are rhizobium. They're uh, associated with within the nodules, uh, form nodules within the roots. Um, mostly, uh, you, uh, as I said, legumes, we would have that. But, um, and phosphorus is generally um, in soils as well. It's not usually deficient. It may not be available to the plant uh, because of pH issues. But one of the things about potassium that's different than the other two components, and it's why it's slightly higher uh, than the others, is that uh, either potassium is a component of your soils or it's not. So it's one of those things that um, tends to be deficient, and it's very important in, uh, in stress management, both biotic and abiotic stresses. It is uh, important uh, to the plant in um, uh, basically maintaining uh, turgor in the plant, uh, and it is key in uh, stomatal opening and closing. Iron and manganese are, and zinc are uh, three of the micronutrients we um, uh, incorporate into Nutrient. Iron and manganese are important in actual um, some of the metabolism within the plant. The most important, I think, is in um, uh, uh, functioning as cofactors in um, that uh, process of actually creating chlorophyll. They're not part of the chlorophyll a molecule itself, but uh, when we, we talk about iron uh, chlorosis, it's really if there is an iron deficiency, it has to do with the plant's inability to uh, manufacture chlorophyll. So these are cofactors, very important uh, uh, to uh, development in the plant, and um, so we include them. If your soil pHs tend to be on the high side, uh, as in some Midwestern places, those, these um, uh, ions, iron, manganese, and zinc would tend to be deficient. Zinc is kind of unique. Zinc is important in um, producing, uh, uh, it's, it's also a cofactor, but in this case, it not only produces enzymes, but um, things like auxins and plant hormones, it's it, in, instrumental in uh, that in plant function. The next slide, please. Katie, could you go to the next slide? Thank you. <laughs> uh, another okay. component that's uh, in uh, Nutrit is the seaweed extract. And the seaweed extract in the formulations derived from hardy kelp, uh, from uh, Esclophyllum nodosum. It comes from uh, the Bay of Fundy, which has these extreme um, uh, tides, uh, and therefore the kelp is in uh, is exposed to both uh, being underwater and exposed to drying conditions. Um, so one of the things that it does to cope uh, with that is it produces some beneficial bioactive substances. Well, what are those? Uh, some of the bioactive substances are things like phytohormones. And those phytohormones are analogous to what plants do. Um, uh, they uh, auxins, um, cytokinins, and gibberellic acid. And those are um, the hormones with it, found within plants that direct growth and um, uh, and uh, cytokinin in particular, which is a component of this extract, uh, helps with cell division and root formation. So uh, it, it helps optimize uh, root development. And because of the cofactors in there, and some of those cofactors go beyond uh, the hormones, there's um, actually proteins and vitamins, minerals that are a component of uh, the extract, as well as organic acids. 
And though that mix, that blend, also uh, aids with stress management within the plant. So it's kind of a unique source of organic matter. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and because that's true of that particular component, it aids uh, microbial activity in the soil. Next slide, please. So, um, hmm. okay, so there's the, as uh, uh, Hayden said earlier, there's um, hygroscopic humectants and surfactants in uh, the formulation, and uh, that actually, it is not a gel technology. What it is, is a uh, humectant that draws moisture directly to the roots for increased uh, uh, root absorption of, of moisture. So um, what it does is take uh, the moisture held in the soil and help aid with absorbing, wetting those roots and, and, uh, and being instrumental in um, plant establishment, actually, and especially if you have a reduced root uh, 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 mass due to transplant um, transplanting. So it has these interesting functions. The surfactant actually helps uh, the humectants penetrate through the soil to the roots, and that's the surfactant is a, is a non ionic surfactant. Is another name for that is kind of soap. Uh, um, uh, it's a surface acting agent, uh, but think of it as an emulsifier or a soap that helps penetrate, a wetting agent. Um, and uh, so uh, the other neat thing about uh, these humectants and surfactants, it also improves uh, not only transplant success, but reduces the amount of uh, moisture needed. Uh, it's not going to replace the need for water, but it helps reduce the amount of water you required, and it proves uh, as long as you have some um, moisture in that soil, then you have uh, uh, the opportunity for nutrients to be solubilized in that soil for uptake. Next slide, please. Next. Is it popping up? Nope. Oh. Much Next, there we go. Okay, humic acid. Uh, humic acid um, is two percent humic acid in the formulation. It's uh, derived from Leonardite ore. Um, this is uh, um, basically um, kind of a, a it's a mineral that is um, a very ancient <laughs> plant material. Uh, it's like it's, uh, think of coal, uh, but it is high in carbon. Uh, and the way humic acids work in soils, and the root word humic, think of humates or um, humus. <laughs> uh, it's the same root, uh, if you will. Um, what it what it helps to do in soils is increases what's called uh, cat exchange capacity. Cat ex cation exchange is um, when you have a, a positively charged ion, those are your metal ions uh, in general, and, uh, and ammonium uh, that have positive charges, um, the exchange capacity is important to kind of hold those ions in place so they're not leached beyond, uh, deeper into soils and beyond the root mass of the plant. Now that's particularly important when you first transplant uh, especially um, whether it's bare root or B&B &B plants, you have a reduced root system and, and some of the specifications, the ANSI specifications on root transplant. Uh, in fact, when done correctly, you may have a, a reduced root system by any, anywhere from 85 to 90 percent. So having increasing your can exchange where you're holding on to ions helps reduce leaching and uh, grabs those ions, and again, it's like the iron, the manganese, the zinc, for utilization in the plant. So um, the other neat thing about having a humic component, it does increase the carbon uh, content of the soil, and both carbon and nitrogen are important in supporting the microbial uh, 
community in the soil. So this microfauna in the soil is dependent on a certain ratio of carbon and nitrogen. And when we talk about carbon in the soil, think about it as carbohydrate. It's food. It's, it's, it's the resource. It's the energy uh, that is utilized by microbial uh, um, organisms. And when you think of nitrogen, think of nitrogen as proteins. And so microbes need both those, those basic elements in order to uh, grow and proliferate and be healthy in the soil. And then they do some really cool things uh, within the soil. And one of them I had implied was actually fixing and uh, changing, converting uh, some of the components to uh, especially nitrogen and uh, uh, insoluble phosphorus to make a plant available. So that's bioavailability is when these components are in a form that can be, uh, these minerals are in a form that can be absorbed by the plant, uh, and that means they have to be in solution and, um, and in a form that is uh, uh, useful. In other words, uh, nit nitrite is not so useful to plants, nitrate is, and so the microbes do that conversion. Um, another thing uh, that is of interest is uh, both um, I implied that with the seaweed component, it does mimic plant hormones and uh, the humic acid also is, has that role um, and aids in improving uh, by these mechanisms both root mass and seedling establishment. Okay. So next we have a testimonial from a customer that used Nutrate. Um, he said that I put together a before and after picture of a small river birch I treated with Nutrate last summer. It's unbelievable and doesn't look like the same tree anymore. I came back a couple months later and the tree literally turned into a cousin it from the Adams family. So what he means by that is much more fuller hair, I guess you would try to say. <laughs> So now you can see from the left to the right how much darker green the foliage is. It usually represents a healthier plant and tree overall, and then also just much more fuller as well. So it, it creates that much more uh, healthier appearance. And here, uh, Joe, if you want to do a quick uh, uh, wrap about this one. Okay. So um, what we were interested in uh, looking at um, does, how does Nutri-Root perform in keeping plants turgid? In this case, we use forsythia, or potted forsythia in, a green, in our greenhouse. And um, what we did was we treated uh, and watered both the uh, um, the treatment with Nutri-Root, and then the uh, one on the right is water alone, and just waited for, for them to wilt. And um, it looked like in those greenhouse conditions, it was five days uh, to the wilting point for the Forsythia in those one gallon pots, uh, where the Nutri-Root uh, plants on the left stay turgid. And um, so when we took it to the next step, where we went over, it was at least two weeks in the greenhouse to Forsythia finally wilted. Um, and then we watered and uh, they actually not only took them to the wilting point because we wanted to push it to see how far we can uh, uh, see that effect. We rewatered, they actually came back uh, and that's not, the picture's not shown here, but the water only uh, actually uh, kind of bit the dust. Uh, so there is, so uh, in extreme situations, uh, as you said, that the eumectin component does not replace water, but it, it certainly did, when water was presented, rehydrate that plant and preserved it against loss. So there's two different aspects to the study, and it's kind of, it was very interesting. Um, yep. Thank you. And then also we have here a before and after. Um, this is just results after a month and a half of treatment. Um, and says, pro tip right there, treating with Nutri-Root will help reduce the impact of winter stress as well by maintaining better soil moisture in the varying times available for the plant. So we are getting into fall season right now. It's cooling down a little bit. Um, 
I'm based in North Carolina, so pulling down here as so everybody's getting ready for the winter stress. Everyone's prepping their gardens and plants right now. Perfect thing to use. And also you can see the root systems uh, on this pear ball uh, tree compared as well. So one untreated, one treated. And you can see the root hairs are much more fuller on the one to the right compared to the one to the left and it just stretches out. So the more surface area root systems have, the better. And then we have another testimonial right here from a head grower. Um, so Nutri-Root is a great way to reduce watering frequency. By reducing our time spent watering in the greenhouses, we have more time to help customers and plant new crops. So just less watering labor overall. Um, like I stated before, Nutri-Root is more than just a fertilizer. It's a com combination of water management as well. Right here, we also have a uh, untreated versus treated as well. And we also included our Arbitar as well. Um, you can see uh, we only watered the one on the right every seven to 10 days compared to the one which is uh, regular uh, generic on the left uh, every two to three days. And just look at the difference with that. So you can see, like I said before, healthy roots have that more white to uh, light brow color than compared to the unhealthy to the uh, left. But those aren't too bad, but they're just way less developed. And then right here, we have a video. And I'm gonna play this video, and Joe, if you could uh, explain it a little bit more in depth after the video, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. What you're seeing are the, the eumectin and the crystal form, so it's whitish to start with, and um, sitting on a lab bench uh, exposed to ambient air, it's just pulling the moisture from the air, and in the video it looks pinkish, but you're going to see the droplets form, and the pinkish droplets form, uh, and the white crystals disappear over time and you're left with um, the um, just the pink moisture there. Um, and that is the action that, uh, that goes on at the root surface. Um, so uh, when you apply this to a new planting or even an established planting, as Hayden suggested, like before a winter for um, uh, just, you know, um, to aid mineral absorption for the winter and overwintering plants. It's a very good good idea. So this is an adjunct, but that's how it works. Thank you. And so that is all we have for Nutri today. Um, here is my cell and my email listed below. If you have any questions or want more information, I'll be happy to send it to you. And also Joe's there to help as well if we need it. But uh, we also have an early order program going on, uh, so definitely don't miss out on that. And is there anybody that has questions? 